Good morning. On your screen is a live view of Starship as it awaits its second attempt at our first ever integrated flight test from Starbase, Texas. If all goes well, we hope to see our Starship spacecraft and super heavy booster, which we collectively call Starship, lift off together for the first time in just over, in exactly 33 minutes from now. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kate Tice, Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And I'm Shiva Bharadvaj, a space operations engineer here at SpaceX. Now, if you've been following along, you'll know that we stood down from our initial launch attempt on Monday, and that was due to a frozen pressurization valve on the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX teams investigated the issue and determined that this valve had some moisture in it, which caused the valve to freeze up when we were loading super chilled liquid oxygen into the booster. Now, these valves are super important because we actually need a pressurant to go back into the tank as we consume propellant. And we actually use a, a pressurant from, that comes from the Raptor engines. Uh, it's heated down there and then put back in the tank. Um, and so a frozen valve there would be a problem during the launch. Yeah, and that's important. You can think of it like drinking out of a thin plastic water bottle. If you're chugging that water, it crinkles if you don't let air back into it. So we use that hot exhaust, exhaust gas from the Raptor engines to refill that consumed volume as propellant is depleted. So um, <laughs> it was a great find by the countdown. And that's why we have a countdown is to allow us to find those issues prior to liftoff. So all of that being said, our teams learned a lot over the last 48 hours, and we are ready to give it another go. As many of you know, Starship is the latest and largest vehicle developed to date by SpaceX. It will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle once fully developed and have twice the thrust of the Saturn V rocket. But the key breakthrough with Starship is that it will be fully reusable and capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons of payload to orbit in a reusable configuration and up to 250 metric tons when expendable. Now for context, Falcon 9 is only partially reusable. We recovered the largest part of the rocket, that's called the first stage, but we don't recover over the second stage. And Falcon 9's heaviest payload to date is just over 17 metric tons. So 150 to 250 metric tons on Starship is an order of magnitude greater in terms of the payload capacity. Now for today's test, we will be uh, the first of many as we work towards transitioning Starship from a developmental into an operational program. And the primary objective today is to gather as much data as we can around the fully integrated vehicle. Now, while we have flown the Starship spacecraft in the past, it is going to be the first attempt of Super Heavy and the first opportunity for us to validate how the two vehicles operate together. Oh, we are so excited for this. <laughs> uh, the purposes for today's flight, uh, we will consider any data received that helps inform and improve future builds of Starship as a success. From a milestone standpoint, our main goal is to clear the pad. <laughs> Every milestone beyond that is a bonus. The further we fly, the more data we can collect. Now, if it does all go well, then we'll expect the Super Heavy to light up its 33 Raptor engines at the base of the vehicle and lift off, clear the pad away down from Starba uh, in, in Starbase, Texas. And then it'll go into ascent. About three minutes into its ascent, we're gonna expect to see Super Heavy separate from the Starship. It'll perform a flip maneuver, and then it'll execute a boost back burn, and we're gonna be targeting a hard landing in the Gulf of Mexico. And while that's happening, we hope to see Starship's six second stage engines ignite and watch as Starship coasts for about an hour at altitudes ranging between 150 and 250 kilometers before re-entering Earth's atmosphere and make its own hard landing in the Pacific Ocean about 250-ish kilometers offshore. But right now, <laughs> next activity is coming up. The flight termination system arms at T minus two minutes, thrust vector control checkouts at T minus two minutes. And then after that, major activity will be the T minus 40 second gate. There's a view looking up at the 33 Raptor engines. There are 20 engines in a circle on the outside. And as Shiva said earlier, 13 engines on the center. Those are the ones that gimbal and steer the vehicle. Ha, ha, ha. 
Love this view. These are the 33 Raptor engines at the base of the super heavy booster. I think we can see those wiggles now. We're currently inside 90 seconds. Next major activity, T minus 40 seconds. That is a gate, a decision point. We're waiting. Possibility the propulsion team may need a few minutes. Flight termination system is armed for flight. We're getting ready for T minus one minute and counting. Next, we'll see as we get past T-minus 40 seconds for final checks of the vehicle. Okay, you can see the clock has recycled. Flight director has called a hold. We are recycling. For the moment, we'll see where they move the clock back to. They could hold at T minus 40 seconds. They could go to an earlier point. Give us a minute to listen into the nets and we'll see if we can get you more information to share. John Innsbrucker again here at the Hawthorne webcast desk. We're holding a T minus 40 seconds. What we've heard so far is we have a couple of issues we're working. One is the booster tank pressurization. Uh, final pressurization was just a little bit uh, long. That's not unusual. We've held a T minus 40 seconds before to pressurize. That appears to have been resolved. At the same time on the second stage, they're working some final purging. Uh, we should know very shortly if that is cleared and if we'll continue the countdown. Everyone, especially that person, is excited <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> like John said, we should know shortly um, if we are able to continue. Uh, but as we mentioned before, we are able to hold uh, up to 15 minutes and still be able to lift off today. Yeah, on Falcon 9, it's a little bit different. Once we start propellant loading, we pretty much have to go at the targeted time. Otherwise, the propellants can warm up and we may not have the performance for that particular uh, mission profile. It's a little bit different on and Starship. Folks, if I can interrupt, yeah. it looks like they're clearing all the flags and we're going to release at T minus 40 seconds. That is amazing news. Amazing. <laughs> Team working quickly through their issues on first and second stages. And I'm sure all of the rehearsals uh, and simulations that they've been doing have prepared them to evaluate this data quickly to try to get us in for today's launch attempt. For those of you just joining, we have a brief hold um, at the T minus 40 second mark. Uh, the team is resolving one issue with the bleed purge on the stage two Raptors. Um, like John just said, the teams are quickly working that and it looks like the flags are being cleared as we speak. So we should be able to resume the launch countdown any moment now. And it's worth noting on Starship that once we resume the countdown, it restarts from the 40 second period and then we keep exactly. going unless another condition pops up. So stick around because <laughs> uh, Starship could be going here real soon. <laughs> Don't walk away, that's for sure. <laughs> Amazing views here coming to us from Starbase, Texas. Uh,
Tyler Fleur to win the picks over. The Pulsing reports first stage engines nominal. What a sight from the Red grand Red cameras at Starbase. We're flying at twice the thrust of the Saturn V heading to space. We're we'll throttled down and throttled back up. Going through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. As the velocity increases, the density of the atmosphere is decreasing. Max Q. Lessening stress on the vehicle. The call out, Max Q now. Continuing to watch the first stage as we head down range. A hundred seconds into flight. Our next major activity is going to be Our set down of the first stage. Houston tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shut down, we will get separation of Starship and Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. When Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. And if all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. And there's views of the Raptor engines on the second stage as we prepare for stage separation. Now after stage separation, the first stage will flip and begin a boost back maneuver for landing in the Gulf. Continuing to fly, Two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. Booster engine cutoff. Beginning the flip for stage separation. As of right now, we are awaiting stage separation, where Starship should separate from the Super Heavy booster. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground cameras the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is, uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. to clear the pad and make it this far into the test flight, the first integrated flight of the booster and the Starship vehicle. Live view there of our control center at Starbase, uh, which we refer to as Star Command. <laughs> as we said before, obviously we wanted to make it all the way through, <laughs> but to get this far, honestly, is amazing. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a rud during ascent. But now this was a development test. This is the first test flight of Starship and the goal was to gather the data and as we said, clear the pad and get ready to go again. So you never know exactly what's going to happen, but as we promised, excitement is guaranteed. And Starship gave us a rather spectacular end to what was truly an incredible test thus far. As we mentioned at the start of today's program, any and all the data that we collected during the test is going to help us with further development of Starship, and it's going to improve the vehicle's reliability as SpaceX seeks to make life multiplanetary. It's really worth noting that the flight path was designed to be over water and all the air and sea space, 
along with that flight path and those surrounding areas were cleared in advance of the test. And of course, we're going to be coordinating with local authorities for the recovery operations. But honestly, what an exciting morning. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we had a successful liftoff from Starbase, Texas at 8.28 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we cleared the tower, which honestly was our only hope. <laughs> we cleared the tower and all the data that we collected all the way through um, the all those Raptor, those 33, although I think we saw that three Raptor engines were out, um, but we got all that data and I, we got so far as to hoping to see the, the Starship, the second stage, separate from the first stage, the super heavy booster. And unfortunately, we didn't make that happen, but that's okay. It was the first integrated launch. Um, and honestly, today was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely incredible day. Uh, we made it through a number of those initial uh, test objectives with getting booster ascent, getting all the way through the countdown, working some issues yep. at the end. Like totally really fantastic tanked, day. Got through the gate of T minus 40 seconds on the second try. Everything released, the hold downs, the quick disconnect arms, yep. everything moves out of the way. And then we got the vehicle off of the pad through max Q all the way up to stage separation, even starting into the prep for stage up. And then as we say, a lot of excitement. <laughs> yep. Honestly, my face has had a smile on it since liftoff and now my face hurts. <laughs> now, since we don't have any insights on the cause of our rapid unscheduled disassembly at this point, we're gonna end our webcast here. Teams will continue to review the data and work toward our next flight test. But before we go, a big congrats to the entire SpaceX team on an exciting first integrated flight test of Starship. And of course, a shout out to our viewers. We appreciate you joining us. And as always, we thank you for your interest in Starship, SpaceX, and your ongoing support. Till next time. <laughs>